Hi guys, it's Hello Alice, and I haven't seen you in so long. I feel like I forgot how to film a video, but I am back. I am so excited to be back. I've been gone for a couple of months. If you have like seen any of my posts on Instagram, you'll know that I have been traveling and I bought a house and just a bunch of stuff happened in my life. And I'm not gonna fill up this video talking about it. I will address it a little bit more in some future videos, but I am back and I am so excited. So, as I said, one of the things that I've been busy with is I bought a house. And in that house, I was able to have an art studio, like an entire room for my art. And this is really exciting and special for me because I feel like you guys have been with me from the smallest of the small and you've just seen not just my channel grow, but also my art studio and my art space grow with it. When I first started my YouTube channel, I was living in like a 400 square foot apartment and I had a tiny, tiny little desk. It was just like one desk with just like a couple of bookcases. No, not even a couple of bookcases. I don't even have, I didn't even have room for bookcases. It was like a desk with like a bookcase on top of the desk. It was tiny. And one of the things that I wanted to do when I first started my YouTube was film a studio tour of that for people that didn't have a lot of space. And that tour is still up on my channel today. So you can go watch that if you don't have a lot of space. But as my channel has grown and my life has grown, I have been able to grow my art room. So you've seen me grow from this tiny little desk to a bigger desk, to a whole little dining room, to now this, an actual art room in my own house, which I got to design and create myself. I am so, so excited to share this with you guys. I've worked really, really hard on this and I hope you love it as much as I do. So I'm gonna shut up now and just show you the art studio. Welcome to my studio! I am so excited to finally show you guys around in here. I feel like I've been working on this forever and now I finally get to show you. I, it's been so weird not having a studio, not having a place to work, um, but I feel like it was so worth the wait. So I'm gonna show you around, show you the decor, show you how I did all the things. So let's start over here. Okay, so I have my bookcase over here and mostly holds books, novel, I know. So the top is just kind of like a decorative thing. I have like a cool wreath up there that I got from Hobby Lobby or something. And I have some books on here. Um, I have some sketchbooks on here as well, just like some natural paper ones that I don't use very frequently. And just some decorative things as well as this little baby pothos plant that I have in water. And then in the center, I have this guy, which I had in my old studio as well, if you remember that. I've had this for ages. I think I've had this since the start, honestly. Um, and it just holds various things. Stickies, clips, office, and art are the current labels, but that frequently changes. Um, it's just kind of stuff that I grab a lot, like erasers and binder clips. Like I have an entire thing of binder clips because I use a lot of binder clips. So moving on down, the first shelf of actual books is basically all my inspiration books and art books that I can go and look through when I am feeling blocked or I want to look at some beautiful art. So I have over here like The Illusion of Life, I have some books on Impressionists, um, J.W. Waterhouse. I also have this sketchbook which is by Chris Sanders who I love, he was um, did all the art for Lilo and Stitch. I have the sketchbook of Lois who I adore, she's like my favorite, favorite artist. Um, and then I just have all the art of books over here. And then I just have a couple of my own things in there as well. I have the literary magazine that I was published on the cover of, which was pretty cool. Um, and I just have my thesis sketchbook over here as well. So that's kind of this shelf. And then moving on down, I have more of my practical art books. So things like the Animator Survival Kit, all my anatomy books, classic human anatomy, anatomy for artists, that kind of stuff. I have some how to paint books in here, some books on Maya animation, um, and then I have a couple things like sketching from the imagination, and then I also have just a couple other nonfiction books over here. Uh, I don't have that many nonfiction books, so I just put them over here. It's mostly on Italian and like dogs. Going down here, I just have some hardbacks, and these are pretty much just all of my like fiction and uh, various other books, like fun books, I guess, um, just on display here, and then routers, ethernet cables, all of that good stuff. So next to the bookcase, we have 
the closet. I have a closet in my art room. This is so exciting. So it's gonna stick. So ready for this? There we go. Welcome to the closet. This is like the size of some of my old art studios. <laughs> um, so I have most of my storage here slash in another bookcase. So this is kind of more of the storage of stuff that I don't use as often, storage of stuff that isn't as pretty, more practical stuff, that's all in here. So I will start over here and walk you through. So the first thing that we have is this, which is where I'm storing all of my scrapbook papers, construction paper, all of that stuff. I also have a stapler and a three hole punch. And this uh, storage unit was from Hobby Lobby. I think it was less, less than $20 and it's great. I love it. And off this, we actually built a second shelf in the closet to hold more stuff. So yeah, it was really practical. On top of this, I have more stuff related to paper. So I have a paper holder with uh, basically small cutting mats. It has my cutting blade in it and then some clipboards. Then here is just a documents box with some printer paper, envelopes, that kind of stuff. And then batteries because you always need batteries. I have three boxes right here. I am obsessed with using these photo boxes for storage. So I got a bunch in this craft paper color because I really think the natural style goes well. So this holds my cards and my stickers. Uh, this is just miscellaneous paper goods. So like extra scrapbook paper that wouldn't fit because it's like weird sized. And then this just says scrap. Uh -huh, because it's basically miscellaneous things for scrapbooking. So little cutouts, rhinestones, all of that stuff. Okay, I have some snacks conveniently hidden. Um, I have plastic wrap, wax paper. I actually have two rolls of wax paper in here. These are just kind of for um, palettes, acrylic paints, uh, keeping paint wet as well. You can wrap your palette with plastic wrap, put it in the fridge, and it'll stay, your paint will stay wet for a lot longer. So over here I have another little mini shelf. Up here I have all of my art bags. I sort of have a problem with collecting art storage bags. It's a real problem, but they're all up here. This is just a box filled with decorative rocks. I don't know. Uh, here is filled with adhesive things, so tape and glue of various kinds. These wire baskets are from the dollar section at Target. And then this just has my cheaper acrylic paint, like my craft acrylic paint, you know, these guys, that is all stored in this. The last thing on this shelf is a crate, gray crate. I've had this for a while. This kind of has practical things in it. It has pallets in it, tools, so my staple gun, my stretching, I don't know what they're called, stretch, stretching pliers, I think, canvas pliers, um, my hot glue gun, as well as some foldable water jugs, water jars, whatever you wanna call them and a couple other little random practical things like command strips and brush cleaner. Going down to the shelf right underneath, I have another identical little gray basket, and this is basically just things in bottles and cans. So I won't go through everything in there, it's just stuff that's in bottles and cans. That's the only organization that there is to this box. Over here I have four more photo boxes that I had from before, and these just hold a bunch of various things I just wasn't really sure where to put. So this is the office, just has pens and pencils, nothing too exciting, erasers, sticky notes, all of that stuff. And I have everything in here arranged in various little tubs and things like that to make it really easy for me to find what I'm looking for. This is just miscellaneous art supplies down here, like there's a foam ball in there from when I made my Hey Hey costume and craft felt and stuff. This is miscellaneous electronics, and then this is old tech because I don't really know what to do with like a third generation iPod, so I just put it in a box and forgot about it. Over here I have a plastic shelving unit with some drawers in it. And right now I'm using this to hold prints, like leftover prints from conventions that I've done, as well as some original artwork down at the bottom. And eventually I'm gonna open up a store and start selling some more stuff. And that's gonna be what this is for, for orders and things like that. And that is these two shelves. All the way up top. So the top shelf up here has a bunch of stuff that I just don't use as frequently. I have my packaging supplies left over from when I shipped from my Patreon. I have this Gorilla Painter box, which is like an outdoor easel painting box. It's very cool. 
And then I have beads and my jewelry making stuff right at the very top. Over here, I have a couple sewing things like my thread and then my patterns. And then this just holds a spare bulb for filming. All my fabric is up here in this bin. And then over here, I have stuff for a t-shirt blanket and then just some filming equipment as well. The last shelf in the closet that's built into the closet holds two of these little white cream baskets. This just holds miscellaneous stuff. Like it has a bunch of old wallets in it um, with like expired gift cards that I keep for some weird reason. And there's like eight lighters in there. So I have a second box for cards and stickers. This kind of has blank cards in it. And then it has stickers and then some little small journals and things like that. This is mostly planner stuff. There's also stencils in here. This actually came with a diaper bag and um, which I bought to use as a carry on, but it's a baby changing mat. And I have it here because if you wanna go sketching outdoors, this is great because it's waterproof. So you can fold it up, take it in your bag, and then you have something to sit on and your butt doesn't get dirty. In this green box, green, blue, I don't know what color this is. I have a bunch of alcohol markers, but I have Ohuhu in here. This is Ohuhu. I think I've touched new down there. And I think I have one other. Um, I don't know what the other one is, but bunch of alcohol markers, none of which have brush tips that I'm aware of. This is a mess. Yep, this is just a basket of stuff I need to go through, honestly. I meant to take it out before the studio tour and I forgot. Um, this is my book binding box. It's currently trapped under the stuff as motivation to get rid of the stuff. Moving over here, I have, again, just stuff that I don't use often. I have this little wire basket right here, which holds my Comic-Con supplies. And this has gift wrapping supplies in the Victoria's Secret bag. Um, on the top, I have a couple metal cases or tins, whatever. And they hold electronic equipment, um, plugs, things like that. I also have this, which holds some filming equipment as well as some other electronic things and some stuff for my Cintiq and tablets. On this shelf, I have this. This is a cookie jar, old cookie jar and it's filled with washi tape, somewhat disorganizedly. This guy holds all of my stamps. This has embroidery thread in it, and this has charcoal stumps. Anything to do with graphite is all in there where its mess is contained. <laughs> so in here I have a little wooden shelf within a shelf kind of thing, and in here I just have some smaller things. I have a little jar filled with graphite. I have this guy, which I've had for ages. I got it from an antique fair in Arezzo, which is in Italy, and it just holds my nibs for my dip pens. This holds woodless pencils, most of which are broken in half. So down here I have these little plastic drawers. I got these from the dollar store. So the bottom drawer has all of my ink cartridges in it for fountain pens. This middle drawer has Prismacolor pastels in it in a very sad state. And then this top drawer has watercolor crayons in it. I have Staedtler and Crayon Dash. Then over here, I just have these Aqua Ink Graphics watercolor inks. I just got these in the most recent Palletful Packs. They are really, really fun. If you haven't seen that video, make sure to check it out over at the Palletful Packs YouTube channel. And then over here, I have just some other jars of things. So I have metallic stuff. There's metallic color pencils, metallic pens. Um, anything metallic is in here. This is spare hot glue gun sticks. Then I have my gouache is all in a giant jar. And then I have rubber bands over here. Coming down to the next shelf, I have this, which I had in my previous studio as well. It's just a little like um, hardware organizer from Walmart and I spray painted it and then I spray painted these with chalk paint and I just keep little things in it. Rhinestones, toothpicks, chalk, all of that stuff is all in here. Then I have this jar, which has mostly X-Acto blades in it, and then some small rulers. I have a Butterbeer mug with some foreign currency in it, and my D&D &D, uh, dice, and some broken keychains. It's just random stuff. Over here, I have more snacks conveniently placed for me. 
And then I have some larger watercolor palettes. I have my Kiritaki Gansi Tamarais. These are my old watercolors from when I was really young. These are my Daler and Brownies. I think they're student quality. In here, I have a bunch of watercolor pencils. Um, these are the Arteza Expert ones and some that I have from Wish. So these are just extra watercolor pencils. So the last shelf has some more canvases on it as well as some palettes. I also have a Stay Wet palette. Then this guy has smaller canvases and it also has my light box for transferring paintings. So behind the door I just have some hooks and on the hooks I just have like some art bags for carrying supplies in if I go out. Um, I have a giant cardigan for when I get cold and I have my 40 West Arts District apron as well as my laptop bag is hung up on the wall over here. And then down below, I have my leather portfolio. All right, so down here, I have a step stool so I can access the things that are up there. And then I have a lot of crates. Um, so I have this, which is just a foldable table. Over here, I have a crate, which basically has stuff that I've bought for YouTube that I need to do something with. It's kind of like a miscellaneous crate. Like I tend to throw things in here that I need to remember. Then here I have my Cintiq and just an empty laptop case. Underneath that, in this plastic container, I have a bunch of filled sketchbooks, half filled sketchbooks, and barely filled journals. I made a little bookshelf thing of two crates here, college dorm room style. And in the bottom, I have all of these binders. This one holds a bunch of original artwork. One used to hold prints, but I moved them up there. In this guy, I have my sewing kit because I do access this pretty frequently, so I didn't want it up there with the rest of the sewing supplies. And then I have a little basket up top that kind of has a couple projects. And then my sewing machine is down here. This is another bin of fabric slash mending, and this is my Hey Hey costume. <laughs> So over here, I have a giant canvas. It's really cheap at Ross, and I was like, oh my gosh, I can't pass that up. And then I have my larger watercolor paper, which I think is quarter imperial or half imperial, and my large cutting boards, um, my old filming board, which is just like a drawing board now, and then some other canvases and a portfolio as well. And that's all just stacked behind this bookcase. Okay, so this is my favorite area of my art room. I wanted a sketching corner so that I would have a really comfortable place to sit and sketch or read or film a sketch with me, which is the same as sketching but with a camera. And so I made this little corner, um, the highlight of which is this chair, which I was in love with for literally three months before it finally went on sale and I got to buy it and I was so excited and it was great. <laughs> Um, then I have my ficus and her name is Fern and I love her. So I have this beautiful print that I got from TJ Maxx that has all these gorgeous plants on it that I absolutely love. And then I have this really cool industrial style light with like an Edison bulb. Then I have a little side table and I have a little blanket underneath um, so that if I get cold I can get all cozy. And I have my snake plant over here whose name is Medusa. Then over here by the window, I have my little Hello Alice sign, which I just got like right before I went on hiatus. And then I have a bunch of succulents and cacti because this window gets quite a bit of light. So I have a bunch of them that I planted in little teacups, actually. And some of them I got from the thrift store. And then this one I actually got when I was in Budapest. So I have these guys up here on this cool hanging shelf, which I really like. And it's on this like rope that goes all the way to the ceiling, so I think that's really cool. And then over here on this little cart, I it turned it into a plant cart. So I have two plants up here. This is like a succulent garden. And then I can't pronounce the Latin name of this one, but I call it arachne because it looks like a spider. It's not like a spider plant. Maybe it is, but I think it looks like a spider, so I named it arachne. <laughs> Down here, I have just my watering can, and then some plant food, and other like plant tools, and a planter. So over here, next to all the plants, I have a little painting corner. So at the center of it, I have my easel, which is just a travel easel. It's not a permanent easel, and eventually I would like to look into getting a little bit more of a heavy weight permanent easel. Now I actually have room for it, but for now this works great. And then over here on the wall, 
I have this. So I am so in love with this. I got this from TJ Maxx and it is the perfect size to hold all my pads of paper. So I mounted it to the wall and it has up here, I have all my watercolor loose papers and as well as this guy because it's way too tall to go in any of the others. And then this is my regular papers. So I have sketching papers, pastel papers, mixed media papers. Those are all in here. And then down here is all of my watercolor papers. And it's super nice and convenient to have them all up here on the wall. And the best part is that my Arche watercolor paper is far away from my dog December because she has eaten this multiple, multiple times. <laughs> Over here, I have this little rolling cart that actually used to hold my makeup, but when we moved, I was able to co-opt it for my art room because it totally fits the aesthetic that I have in here. So on the top, I have two little jars with my paintbrushes in for acrylic and oil painting. So I have my long paintbrushes in this larger jar, and then I have my shorter, smaller paintbrushes in the smaller pot. In the first drawer, I have all of my Liquitex acrylics, and I also have my Grumbasher Academy acrylics. And basically this is just the acrylics that I use most frequently. It's like my full size acrylics. They're all up in this drawer. Then in the second drawer, I have everything organized into bins. So I have them organized into bins by brand. So these are my Golden Open, which are slow drying acrylics. And I love these. These are my absolute favorite. They're so nice. I have my Arteza acrylics. I have one lone duo aqua oil. I don't know where I got this from, so I just have it in there. I have all of my mediums that I have for acrylic painting. So these will add like texture and things like that to your acrylic painting. And underneath that, I just have miscellaneous acrylics because I've just kind of collected quite a lot over the years. In the front of this drawer, I have a couple other things. I have some more mediums. So I have my Gamblin, which is for my oil painting. I have some Retarder, which basically increases the working time of your acrylic paints. So it helps them to not dry out as fast, which I super need living in Colorado. It's such a dry climate here. And then I also have a De La Rowney Glaze Medium, which helps thin out the acrylic paint for working in lots of thin glaze layers. And then all the way down here in this bottom drawer, I just have my oil paints, which are, some are new and some are very old. I finally have these out. I haven't really used oil paints since college because I haven't really had a great ventilation system and now that I have a dog that's something I've been really cautious about but now that I have my own art studio with a window and I have outdoors and Desi has the whole house I can definitely get started oil painting again so I'm so excited for that. So expect some oil painting videos. So over here I have this little wooden table which is also part of the painting corner. When I'm painting I can pull this out and use it to put my paint palette on. And right now it has paper towel on it, matte medium and gloss medium as well as this little wire basket that has my little spray bottle on it, a palette scraper and then a paint rag. All right, so over here on this wall, we have something that I'm super, super excited about. So I made this myself. Ooh, very exciting. I can put nails in wood. So basically, I just took a piece of wood, hammered some nails in it at the height that I wanted, stained it, and then hot glued some rope around it and hung it on the wall. And it's a ruler holder. So I have my little horsehair brushes over here for dusting off eraser dust. And then I have all my rulers and also a bottle opener because I'm missing one of my rulers. So I figured this seemed useful. So over here we have my desk. So this is the area where all the work happens. So it's the same desk as I had before. I didn't really get any new furniture here because I love, love, love this desk. If you're curious about it, it's a countertop from Ikea and then it's just put on legs from Ikea. I got the idea from Fatela on YouTube. It's not my idea, total credit to her. She's awesome. I'll start with the under side of the desk, which isn't that exciting. But I do have a couple little hidden things under here. Over here I have a power strip it's stuck under here so I have all the power I need. And then I have a little hook with a hair dryer. So I finally have a dedicated hair dryer and it's always right there for when I want to dry my watercolor paintings. And then I have a basket over here which holds stuff that I'm currently working on. So the current supplies that I'm using, any paintings that I'm currently working on that I want to put away, I can just put them in here with the supplies that I was working on them with and then when I go back to them I can just pull them right out. And then this is my trash can which is actually a planter. 
and then I also have a shredder and this little basket which just holds sort of random things and things that I just need to be able to get easy access to. So the main bulk of the desk I tried to keep somewhat clear but it's a pretty deep desk since it was the countertop so I do have some stuff in the back. So I have my monitor and the monitor stand which is from Target. I covered this whole wall area in cork squares that I got from Walmart which I love because I love cork boards. I'm a huge fan of just like sticking, pinning things up. And so this gives me all the room to pin all the things. I hopefully won't run out of room anytime soon, which is great. I have a little letter holder here, which holds some cables, some stuff I want to hang up here. And then right now I just have some receipts in it. Over here I have pens, pencils, highlighters. It's kind of desk supplies, not so much drawing supplies. Then I have some art supplies, I have a lighter for my candles, I have some washi tape that I've been using, um, my uh, pencil sharpener, erasers, all of that. And then to the right I have some camera equipment like my lens and a cable and memory cards and things like that. Over here I have Frenchie. Frenchie is my favorite plant right now. She's a Fetonia and she almost died. This whole half wilted away and it's slowly coming back because I figured out that you need to mist them and they like humidity, but I live in Colorado, so that's really hard. So I missed her about a lot. Like pretty much every time I come in here or look at her, I miss her. And all I talk about is this plant. So I'm gonna move on, but this is Frenchie and she's a very important part of my life, which is why she's on my desk. So over here I have this little tray and I have the art supplies that I use most frequently on the tray. Um, I have my water jar which is from Francesca's and it's a wine cup and it says can't touch this and it has a cactus which I really appreciate. And then I have this which is kind of more frequently used art supplies. These are all my watercolor brushes and then all of my watercolor pencils are in this little tea jar. So I won't go through everything on the cork board, but I do just want to highlight um, these guys because these pins were actually designed by my best friend here on YouTube, Momo or Monique Rene. Um, I will link her channel down in the description box below, but she designed these uh, for her Chronically Cute series. And these specifically were for cystic fibrosis, which she has, and she does a lot of really, really cool stuff in um, support of raising awareness about chronic illnesses, so you should definitely check her out, and she's an amazing artist as well. So I just had to shout her out. And I put them on my playlist live uh, lanyard. I put them on my playlist live lanyard. So over here we have my filming rig, I guess is what I'm gonna call it. So, me and my boyfriend built this. Okay, my boyfriend built this. And what it is, is it's these pipes, and my camera is attached to the pipes, with a pipe clamp, and so is actually my microphone. And the pipes can move back and forth, so I can pull my camera out for filming overhead shots, and then I can push it back and out of the way when I'm done with it. It also means I can kind of move it around if I need to. And then because this is on a pole mount, pole clamp, I can just move it to the left and the right if I need to as well. The microphone's on that as well. So yeah, um, I'm pretty excited about this. I think it makes filming a lot easier, and I can also attach a couple things to this, like bendy tripods and things like that. So super useful, and it was pretty easy to put together. Then I have a shelf up here, which has just some decorative items and then more filming equipment. I got this at TJ Maxx. It's actually a clamp for overhead filming with a camera, but it will also hold my webcam. So I used this to actually stream on Instagram Live, I think yesterday, and it worked really, really well. So good $7 purchase there. So this lives right here. And then I have another wire basket, which just has important filming supplies in it and important tech supplies in it. So my bendy tripod, some of my other cameras, my webcam, my external hard drive, all of that's in here. One other thing that I have at my desk is my magnetic strip. I got this I think at Ikea maybe a while ago and I just screw it into the wall and I use it to hold my scissors so that I don't lose my scissors. It is extremely useful. So above the desk we have something that I wanted for so long and was like a huge part of this room for me which is a gallery wall and most of it is art that I already had and I'm super excited to share some of it with you. And 
I finally got around to getting all of this art framed, which a lot of it was art that was in my old studio. I have some really, really special things up here. So I have my silver play button right in the center, which is kind of what I built everything off of, which is what I got when I surpassed 100,000 subscribers. Over to the right, I have this amazing print from Zyra Banez, who's another artist here on YouTube. She's so talented, so you definitely have to check her out. And she sent me this for the YouTube artist collective, Secret Santa. And I will link everyone that I mentioned down in the description box. Next to it, I have this beautiful piece by uh, Danica Sills. And I got this from her when I met her at Denver Comic Con, which was so exciting. It was so wonderful to meet her in person, and she is so nice, and she even signed it for me. And I love the bright yellow. It makes me so happy. I also have my degrees on the wall from Rocky Mountain and from CSU. So above these two, I have this beautiful original artwork of a deer that one of my subscribers, Iguana Do, drew for me and gave to me at Fort Collins Comic Con, and I think it's so beautiful. It was so sweet. I have this gorgeous piece from Elisa Draws, who I love, and I have followed her for ages, and she was at Denver Comic Con, and I got to get one of her pieces, and oh, I love it. I love it. It's plants. And then over here, next to my CSU degree, is something from one of my very, very good friends here on YouTube, Mira Byler, who I absolutely adore. And she drew this, and it's Hello Alice and Desi, so it's me and Desi. And I got it from her at Playlist Live. She had it in her sketchbook, so she gave it to me, and so I had to have it framed. A couple other things on this wall that I really, really love. I have a collection of postcards from some of my favorite artists of some of my favorite pieces, some of which I've seen and some of which I unfortunately didn't get to see. All the way up top, I have a piece that my art teacher in high school gave to me when I graduated. It is so, so special to me. I love it um, and I'm so excited to finally have it framed. And I also have a couple of my own pieces up here, a piece that I did of the scene from Tangled and the stars in her hair piece that I did for YouTube. One other thing on the wall that is really, really special to me is my granddad's cap. My granddad passed away a few years ago and I got his cap and so I hung it on the wall because he was always super, super supportive and proud of me. So it's just nice to have that reminder of him. I have my second bookcase over here and this holds most of my other art supplies, including the ones that I use most often and more frequently. So up here I have my markers in their same case as before, which is an old Coca-Cola crate that I got at this vintage store. I think it's really, really cool and I love it. I have mostly Copics in here, but I also have some Pro markers and then a bunch of Prismacolors down at the bottom. I also have up here my Prismacolor colored pencils, which I finally had too many and I couldn't keep them all in one jar no matter how hard I tried. So what I did was separate them out into mason jars on color. So I have this, which is grays, whites, and browns. I have pinks and reds in this jar. I have yellows and oranges and creams, and then greens and blue-greens, blues and purples. So down here, you can see something kind of cool that we did. So we added lights, light strips back behind here. So you can actually change the colors of it, which is pretty cool. Um, it's just like a fun little thing that I wanted to do. So down on this shelf, you can see I have this cool LED light strip. You can actually change the colors of it, which is really, really cool. And underneath here, I have jars of my most used art supplies. I have an Amazon Echo over here to play music. And then I have this jar, which contains all of my markers, mostly Tombow and Crayola Super Tips for bullet journaling. I have this little jar, which has all of my fine liners in it. This jar has my gel pens in it. Mostly they're white, but there's a couple other colors in there. This guy just kind of holds miscellaneous supplies that I'm not 100% sure what to do with. So there's some colored pencil, mechanical pencils in here, some erasers, just various little things. They just kind of hang out in there. This contains graphite pencils and pastel pencils, as well as some refill leads for some lead holders. This is an old candle jar, and it has a bunch of colored fine liners in, mostly used for bullet journaling. My favorite ones are these guys. They're the Paper Mate Flares. I love them. They're so nice. This just has the Karen brush markers that I got in the most recent palette packs because I wasn't really sure where to put them, and I do like them, so I've been using them. This Marauder's mug has all of my water brushes in. 
And then over here in the other mug, I have all of my fountain pens as well as my dip pens. This last jar has some other colored fine liners in, but these are ones for art. So these are for bullet journaling and these are more for art and drawing. So they're like brown microns and things like that. And then I have a TARDIS piggy bank. Moving on down to the next shelf, I have more of these photo boxes. The first box that I have is my watercolor palettes. This holds all of my large watercolor palettes, some of which are not in here right now because I've been using them. The next box holds my travel watercolor palettes. It also holds some specialty palettes, like my metallic palettes, and normally it holds my gold fine text, but they're out right now because I was using them. This box has my loose watercolors in it. They're all organized into bins, and basically by brand, my little Cornells are over here. These are the core ones, and then Artez is kind of more to this side, and then all of the ones in this plastic bag are Dan Smith. And then I just have some pans in this little gold heart box. The next box that I have in here contains my brush markers. So I have a bunch in here. They're all mixed up together. I have some from Ohuhu and I have some from Arteza. I also have these that are separated out because they're smaller brush markers or they have a chisel nib. This box holds my ink. So as you can see, I have all my inks in here. This is where they've been for ages. But I have all of these uh, Daler and Rowney artists ink, acrylic artists ink. I have these Noodler's inks over here at the side, and then I have some Windsor and Newton inks stacked in the back. And then I have a couple other various ones around here, such as Emerald of Chivore, which is such a pretty, pretty, pretty ink. Okay, so the last box is a little bit of an outlier because it's not something that I use that often, but this is just where it lives. And this is a box just filled with ribbons. Down in the second to last shelf, I have my old printer, which is my current scanner. And then I have two more boxes. The first box is a journaling box, and it contains all of the current supplies that I'm using for journaling, but I'm not currently using in my active journal, if that makes sense. So I have a small traveler's journal in here, and then I have some traveler's journal inserts, because I have been really into traveler's journals. I have some stencils, I have some clips, and I have my old bullet journal that I paused on because I moved into a traveler's journal. So the last box on this bookshelf is labeled small books, and that's pretty much exactly what's inside. It's just mostly small sketchbooks, and I think there's a couple mini notebooks in here as well. So the last thing that I have down here is my printer, which is the Epson Artisan 1430. I haven't used it in a really long time, but I'm hoping to get it going again here soon. So this next storage solution is something that I am so in love with. I got this from TJ Maxx, are you sensing a theme, from the office supply section, and it's these like hanging baskets, and I used it to organize all of my sketchbooks, and I think it looks really cool. So at the top I have just regular sketchbooks, this is where my normal sketchbook lives, except for I, I have it out. Um, down here I have different sketchbooks, so I have my watercolor sketchbooks down here, as well as toned paper sketchbooks, so brown and black and um, a couple handmade papers. And then the very bottom basket has all of my larger sketchbooks in here. Watercolor, toned, regular, they're all together, they're just large sketchbooks. So this used to be my printer stand. I painted it gray, unfortunately, a bunch of that paint has already gotten chipped, but it's fine, it adds to the aesthetic. I just have some paperbacks down here. I haven't unpacked all my books, but I have some of them in here. And uh, down here, I have some printer paper in this drawer. So I have photo printer paper and things like that for when I do make prints. At the top, it's a little bit more of a display area. I have this cool little vase, um, a clock, and then some Harry Potter pins. I'm a Ravenclaw. Let me know your house down below because I'd be really interested. The last thing that I have on here is this little letter tray, which just kind of holds stuff that I use a little bit more frequently. Um, it has a card and it says, I'm sorry for what I said when I was hungry that I gave my boyfriend. I'm mean when I'm hungry. So uh, I have some notes in here and a notebook in here. So here I have this cool gold metal wall piece. It's like a grid and it has these clips on it. So what I have on here is my most recent artworks that I've done, and I'm gonna kind of rotate them around. As I finish artwork, I should be able to kind of put it up here, and it'll enable me to see common threads in my artwork, which I think will be really helpful. Up here, I have a shelf which has some of my 
special books on it, I guess. They're like the really nice hardback cover books. Um, and then I have this cool bookend and just some flowers and decorative things. The last thing I have is my mannequin, which is currently wearing my scarf and my valedictorian tassels. And that is the end of my art room. I really hope that you guys liked this tour. I hope that you liked seeing my art room. I worked so, so hard on it, and I was so excited to share it with you guys, so I hope you love it. Let me know what your favorite part was down below, as well as your Hogwarts house, because I would love to hear it. And thanks so much for watching. I love you. I'm so happy to be back, and I'll see you next Friday. And as always, thanks for watching, and have a great rest of your day. Bye, guys!